Welcome back. President Biden meeting with Pope Francis one-on-one -on -one earlier this morning at the Vatican for about 90 minutes' time. Climate change and COVID-19 were expected to be the main focuses of discussion. The meeting comes after Catholic criticism of Biden's pro-abortion stance. President Biden starts his European trip with no spending deal as progressives hold his agenda hostage. Joining me right now is the former White House press secretary. She is the co-host of Outnumbered, Kaylee McEnany. Kaylee, it's great to see you again. Thanks so much. You know, the president once again wants Wanted optics to go his way, and just like he wanted to have a good story to tell on September 11th by rushing everybody out of Afghanistan, he wanted a good story to tell his colleagues in Europe that the U.S. agreed to climate change. Now they should agree to this policy. Can't do it now. Your take. No, exactly right. You know, I argue that yesterday was the second worst day of Biden's presidency, the first being Afghanistan. Uh, he obviously can't keep the world in order. Um, he, he failed miserably there, but he also can't keep his own house in order. I mean, these are Democrats. He should have been able to go into that meeting, push for a vote on infrastructure, but he didn't. And this isn't just once, Maria. This is twice he's gone in and blown up the deal. He was supposed to go in and say, vote for infrastructure, the time he visited at the beginning of the month and yesterday. Both times he didn't do it. He tied it to the progressive package and in doing so sealed the fate of both and did not get that much anticipated victory uh, Nancy Pelosi and others were touting. So, so what's your take? I mean, is there a good chance that nothing gets done at this point? I mean, obviously the progressives are holding the, uh, uh, the infrastructure plan hostage because they won't vote on it unless they get what they want in the reconciliation piece. I think they end up getting something. Uh, one thing that Democrats are pretty good at is sticking together, though it's been kind of rocky and getting to the final end point. It'll be a much more watered down version of the bill. But I do think that we get there. Uh, Jayapal uh, and others have signaled that, you know, this is kind of looking OK now that they have the legislative text. So almost a tacit endorsement on their part. Unfortunately, I think this is horrible for the country, this government monstrosity bill. Uh, it will be watered down, thankfully, instead of that three point five trillion, it will be closer to one. 1.5, which really, we all know these social programs aren't going away. It'll be closer to $4 trillion in reality. Uh, but I do think they get there, unfortunately, because it's not good for the country and it's not popular in polling either. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, I want to bring James Freeman in. James, the op-ed, the top op-ed in the journal this morning, a jerry-rigged budget framework uh, by the editorial board goes through all the real costs of these programs and what the Democrats are saying that they cost. I mean, at this point, I think people would just like some honesty. For example, stop saying that it costs nothing when it actually costs multi-trillions, you know, and, and stop calling it a human infrastructure plan when it's anything but. It's a social social spending plan that focuses on climate. Your, your thoughts, James. Jump in here. Yeah, uh, stopping the accounting falsehoods would be a nice start. It, it gets back to, as you mentioned, the optics. They keep coming up with these sort of phony deadlines, phony accounting, phony reasons why we supposedly need this uh, counterproductive, uh, at best, unnecessary plan. But, Kaylee, this idea, this Pelosi-Biden argument that in order to competently conduct foreign policy, he needs Congress to approve trillions of dollars of new domestic entitlement spending. It's, it's just, just beyond weird. But I, doesn't it tell us that he still don't have a real argument for this thing? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Look, I mean, 36 percent, according to the AP, approve of how Biden's conducting this. It is unpopular in West Virginia. Uh, it's unpopular by a plurality out in Arizona. The two states, Manchin and Cinema, hail from. But you're exactly right, James. You don't need a domestic boondoggle of a spending bill in order to conduct foreign policy. And I would argue his staff is setting him up poorly. Yeah. Look, when I was in the White House, you know, Mark Meadows, the chief of staff, would always keep me apprised as to exactly where Congress stood on passing the NDAA, on COVID relief. Uh, he was a creature of the Hill and was very good at making sure both the president and myself as a, sp a spokesperson knew where we were standing. But his staff, to set him up with this framework without legislative text that yeah. he releases with no consensus or support, they really served him poorly in addition to the president serving himself poorly. So, Kaylee, real quick before you go, how important is this Virginia race? Uh, Republican candidate Glenn Youngkin getting some positive news for the campaign during a rally yesterday. We see now that he is actually higher than McAuliffe. New Fox News poll finds Youngkin eight points ahead of Democrat Terry McAuliffe with likely Virginia voters as the election now is just a few days away this upcoming Tuesday. 
This would be earth shattering, Maria. Biden, of course, won the state by 10 points. He's underwater there uh, at 43 percent approval. Um, and he's in doing so drowning the candidate, Terry McAuliffe. We'll see, um, you know, not to be too confident on Glenn Youngkin's part. You got to deliver those votes on Tuesday. But it would be earth shattering. It would be a massive bellwether, also making it more difficult for Biden to pass this legislation uh, there on the Hill if they lose, because you'll have a lot of very jittery moderates uh, who look at Virginia and see, oh, that may be my fate if Glenn Young can wins there. Yeah, that's a great point. All right, Kaylee, we'll see you later on on Outnumbered on Fox News. Thank you so much Thanks, for Maria. being here this morning.